It's all happening this week. Storm clouds everywhere, but we've got our very own Stormzy brewing here tonight. Oh, say the words, say the words. Let's start the show. Hey! Welcome to the show. I tell you, we've got some great guests for you tonight. Uh, Stormzy, of course, and also a first-time appearance by Oscar-winning star Gina Davis. Yes. <laughs> I think we all love Gina in Thelma and Louise. Uh, do you remember the great scene at the end? Oh, you remember that? Fantastic. Oh, on the subject of driving things off a cliff... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. Uh, <laughs> goodbye. We'll never forget you, Liza. Uh, <laughs> I mean, what can you say? We're recording on a Thursday. By the time this goes out, Paddington Bear could be Prime Minister. Uh, I know. I have free marmalade. Free marmalade for all. Uh, so, who's it gonna be next? Well, sources say it could be Penny Mordaunt. Yeah, for the party's sake. It, it could be Rishi Sunak. <gasps> for the country's sake. Or even... Boris Johnson. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> Let's get some guests on! She's the queen of the dance floor and Strictly Judge is now turned author with her book, Finding My Own Rhythm. It's Mutsi Mabusi! Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Have a seat too! Oh. From Liverpool to Hollywood, he set the screen alight in Gangs of New York, The Irishman, This Is England, and Line of Duty. It's Stephen Graham! Hello, sir. Oh, yeah. Hugging, hugging, hugging. Bring it in. Hi. There you go, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, man. She's the Oscar winning star of The Accidental Tourist, The Fly, A League of Their Own, and the iconic Thelma and Louise. Please welcome the great Gina Davis! <laughs> Have a seat, there we go, Stephen! Oh. <laughs> and he's the Ivor Novello and Brit Award-winning grime sensation who's back with his much-anticipated third album, This Is What I Mean. It's Stormzy! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello, come in, come in, come in, come in. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hello, all. Lovely to see you all. Now, we've got to talk about names, because actually, Stormzy, the last time you were on, I didn't ask you. So, how old were you when you became Stormzy? Uh, I was about... How old was I? Maybe about 12, 13. Yeah. And where did it come from? How did it happen? It's not that exciting, you know? I'm still asking. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's, it's I, I was sat on my sofa in... You're right, it's a bit dull so far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't get any better. <laughs> and I was in my front room and I was with my cousin and... Does, it, does anyone remember MSN? <laughs> yeah? All right, cool. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't think everyone would remember it, but MSN... And um, I just thought God just put it in my head and I was at Stormzy and I went on MSN and I changed my screen name. To Stormzy. <laughs> and that was it. And then the rest was history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, did you like Storms? No, 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 nothing. <laughs> nothing. There was nothing. I weren't into Storms. I weren't like fast as lightning. I weren't nothing. <laughs> just. So ooh. there was no deep philosophical insight? No, nothing. I just thought this would sound good and that. Like, but isn't it amazing that you stuck with it? There wasn't a time when you were like 16 going, I've got to ditch this Stormzy thing. <laughs> it's, it's funny though, because when I hear my name sometimes, I laugh at it. <laughs> Like when people are like, Stormzy, I'm like, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Gina, Gina, lovely name, but you spell it differently, yes. don't you, with a two E's. Yes. Um, why is that? Well, I was named Virginia after my aunt, and her nickname was Ginny, so my parents thought that we have to come up with a different, you know, a different nickname and hit upon Gina. And then when I started acting and I was in, you know, articles or whatever, my mom said, People seem to love the way you spell your name. And I said, yeah, yeah. And I always say, you know, you didn't know how to spell Gina. Oh, no, I knew how to spell it. I grew up in an Italian neighborhood. I knew absolutely how to spell it. Why did you spell it with two E's then? 
She says, well, I didn't want anyone to think your name was China. <laughs> <laughs> so just so we're clear, my entire identity is based on fear of vaginas. Oh. <laughs> I know how you feel. <laughs> and uh, Stephen, Stephen's obviously your name, Stephen, but you've had lots of nicknames. Like, famous co-stars have given you nicknames and things, haven't they? Yeah, I've had a couple, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a few, yeah. Uh, like what? Um, it, well, when I worked with Leo, um, he, he called me Animal. DiCaprio! OK, <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he gave me the nickname Animal just because um, when we'd go out drinking in Italy, obviously, we'd be in from... Liverpool and half Irish, I used to yeah. be able to drink quite well. <laughs> uh, so he called me Animal. Yeah. It's actually your Liverpool accent. Who's it? Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio? Was it he the one who loves your accent? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he used, yeah, he used to make me say chicken. <laughs> <laughs> um, and chicken and loch and lochets. <laughs> lochets. They like these. They like these sweet. These you know these sweets with onion in them. You don't remember lochets, don't yeah. you? Yeah. 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 So he used to go what? What's the I, first thing? Chicken. Is that chicken? Like chicken? No. Chicken. <laughs> like chicken. It's, it's chicken in Liverpool. Oh. Chicken. Oh my you know, like God. I get it. Chicken. Like, yes. Chicken. But where I come from, we say chicken. 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 But can you chicken. can you say mutzechetzi? Mutzechetzi. Super. So uh, that's my name, you know. Oh. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Very impressive. Very yeah. impressive. And uh, Motsi and your yeah. sister Oti, obviously those yeah. are your names, but th those names have meanings. Yes. So yes. what are the meanings? Well, my name means Motsicheti. It means you can lean on me, and oh, I'm wow. like a friend, oh, sort of beautiful. thing. Yes. Yeah. Stay strong. <laughs> <laughs> lean on me. <laughs> That's my name. Yeah. No, and uh, my sister's name, her full name is Utile. And it means she has arrived, and uh, we all know she has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> we feel it every day. <laughs> I like that, though, she has arrived. Does that mean, like, <clears throat> was that a quick birth or a slow birth? Like, why do you call someone <laughs> she has arrived? Is it kind of like, I've been waiting four days, she has arrived? <laughs> or is it kind of like, oh, she's arrived? <laughs> to be honest, I think she's the only planned baby in the family. That's why she has arrived. We were just accidents. <laughs> <laughs> Dating accidents. <laughs> yeah, lean on that. Uh, <laughs> put a book up against it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is exciting. Stormzy, uh, you are performing for us later. Yes, yes sir. you are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so looking forward to it. And this is this is your first live performance of new music in a while. Yeah, for about three years, I believe. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Sorry, can I just take off my? I'm absolutely sweating. Yeah. <laughs> I've been, I've been trying. To, everyone's been talking. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm hot, I'm... Oh, I, I, I said hello to you backstage and I thought, that is a very yeah, nice yeah, yeah. I, I thought it's a schoolboy editor. Yeah. No, I've been dying here still. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Everyone's been talking and I've just been trying to concentrate. Like, yo, that's... Sorry. That good. Uh, you know, if you're now. still hot, feel free to slip your top off. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll stand on the table. We're all friends here. We're all friends. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can breathe now. Oh. <laughs> very good. Uh, so listen, you are going to be performing Hide and Seek which is yeah. from the third album, This Is What I Mean. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the vinyl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing. Like, the last time Stormzy was on the show, you did an amazing performance. Mm -hmm. And then after that, off you went to uh, Glastonbury. You were the yeah. first grime artist to ever headline Glastonbury. Yeah. And this look is now so iconic, the, the Banksy bulletproof vest. So did Banksy, like, how do you get a Banksy bulletproof vest? I, I, it's just kind of bestowed upon you. <laughs> I, swear, I swear to you, that's how it, I swear, that's what it feels like. It was like the, the <laughs> I, I, have I told this story before? I'm gonna tell it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so my contact with Banksy was he's he is he is as elusive as you can imagine. Like as in Is your contact with Banksy Banksy? <laughs> not 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 really, no. It's like no, it's not really, like, you, you get contacted through notes, like... It sounds like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite, like... Is it cloak and dagger? It basically, like, in a nutshell, like, and then... Yeah, it was mad. I don't Are even... You sending... Sometimes, can I be real, talking about Banksy, I feel, like... <laughs> <laughs> I swear to you, like, whenever, whenever people ask me, like, about the vest, I'm like, like, who sent you here, like, yeah, so like, I don't know, 
Well, yeah, I'm, I'm might just, you know. But, what but, I mean? do you, but do you go, dear Banksy? I need no, a no, art. no, no, no. He, he <laughs> anything Banksy does, that's one thing I can I can vouch for. Banksy is that, um, yeah, he he literally found me and said, I've made something for you. Like if you like if you want to wear it, like if you don't, and I was like, yeah, I definitely want to wear it, please, like. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, please. And then, yeah, and then, even, like, we'd done some fittings for it, and then, yeah, it was just, it was very, 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 um, insane. Did you actually meet him? I can't, I can't. You can't say, can you? <laughs> yeah. so, oh. He so did. <laughs> went, for, went for fittings, I mean... No, 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 that's gonna be he someone else. There. Yeah, yeah, see, he not... was never, I swear to you, or she was never there. <laughs> oh. But yeah, it was, um, yeah, it, he literally, like, it, that's why I, I genuinely feel like it felt like it was bestowed upon me, like, as in he found me through the and said, You are gonna wear this vest, yeah. And then that look became your Madame Tussauds waxwork. But that's, yeah. not, that's, not the real, <laughs> that's not the real vest, is it? Nah, 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 nah. Where's the, where is the real vest? I'm sure <laughs> it's, it's in a museum, I believe. Called your house? Or maybe Matt. No, no, no. <laughs> like, do you wanna hear something funny? So after Glastow, <laughs> I had the vest, and I've never been so scared in my life. Like, <laughs> because people, that's like, people do big, what's yes. the SVR? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I had it in my house, and it was, it's just like in my bedroom, I'm looking at it like, yo, like, I need to get rid of this. Like, I felt like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I felt like, yo, like, and then I, I took it to um, the safe and kept it in the safe, and now it's at a museum. Because with art, I didn't know this, but if you have like world famous or world renowned or very important pieces of art, it's a thing amongst art collectors that you're meant to lend it to museums. Because apparently the art is so important to the world that no one man can have it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Apparently, yeah. yeah. And that's so, what they told you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what they told me. <laughs> Thank you very much, Stormzy. I love that. Um, uh, but no, I love that you were in Madame Tussauds and your mother got a bit confused when you were trying to tell her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's... Oh, my mum's mad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she got confused. Bless her, and yeah. But I was like, Mum, I'm in Madame Two, Two Swords. And she was like, ah, oh, what barbecue sauce? And I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, I'm in Madame Two Swords. And she's like, no, yeah, barbecue sauce. So I'm like, no, Mum. <laughs> so bless her, yeah, we got oh. there in the end, though. It's a good idea, Stormzy barbecue sauce. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. It's in your future, <laughs> yeah. Weirdly, Motsi sent us in a picture. Is this a, a waxwork or the real thing? No, this is real. Oh. This is amazing. So what happened is I absolutely love, love Oprah. Everyone loves Oprah. Everyone loves Oprah. <laughs> so, you know, I went to South Africa and then I moved to Germany and then she had this vision tour, um, 2020. And I was like, oh my God, I manifested this. I'm going to meet Oprah. And then they were like, yeah, you can take pictures. And just before we took pictures, she's like, I don't want to hear your life story. <laughs> then, <laughs> that's it. So we just took the picture and I was so frightened. You can see my head. <laughs> I, I was like moving away because I, I was so scared. But this is real. I love her. Um, but does she say, I don't want to hear your life story to everybody? Yes. <laughs> I mean, imagine you're Oprah Winfrey. How many stories would you hear? Uh, like, everybody yeah, wants to yeah. tell you how they survived. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> like, the, I don't want to like, hear it. <laughs> eight hours, really? And the bus came? <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I could understand. Even then, I thought, oh, she taught me a lesson. Again, boundaries, you know? Right. Time. You don't get your time back. I fully understood that. I do it all the time now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter who can... I don't want to hear the story. <laughs> <laughs> Not interested. Because, uh, Stephen, in one of your first ones, Snatch, of course, you got to work with Hollywood great Brad Pitt, which must have been extraordinary. <laughs> yeah. But you kind of... You kind of blagged your way in, or...? Um, I suppose technically, yeah. Uh, <laughs> apparently, Guy was only seeing people from London. Um... So when I went in for the meeting, I pretended I was from <laughs> South East London. <laughs> and I walked in, I went, oh, that mate. And he was like, looked at me. And then I was like, I've, I've come along for the audition. And he was like, you're a scout, sir. <laughs> and I went, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, no, I've worked with you before. And I was like, I know, but I thought you might have forgotten. He was like, no. <laughs> anyway, I got the job. So, you know, uh, but of course, right. Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt owes his entire career to someone on our couch, <laughs> and that would be Gina Davis. Yeah. Uh, no, because you did... Thelma and Louise was his first film? Uh, I don't... He'd done very little. I think yeah. it might have been his first film. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. And, uh, 
And why did you say yes to him? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, the, the, it was down to... Once I was cast, it was down to four finalists for that role. And uh, they said, would well, you read with them so we could see, you know, what you're like. And each one came in, and each one was very handsome. They all had brown hair and very talented. I was, but had no, you know, I didn't care who it was going to be. And then the fourth one who comes in is Brad Pitt. And, uh, and he's so charismatic and so incredibly talented that I was, like, screwing up his audition because I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> I forget to say my line, because I'm just like, wow, he's really talented. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so then I didn't know if they wanted my opinion or not, but I said, would you be interested in knowing what my reaction was? And they went, oh, yeah, please. I was like, the blonde one? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my... It, I was not responsible for it. Well, you're, you're, you kind really, of really Do you know what happened to the other three? Yes. Uh, I didn't know who they were at the time, but it turns out... It was Grant Show and Mark Ruffalo. Oh, wow. And then the third person I was sitting next to on a flight from Europe back to L.A., and then the uh, flight attendants met me at the door and said, guess who you're sitting next to? And I said, guess who he's sitting next to? Because <laughs> <laughs> for once in my life, I said the right thing at the right time. And uh, anyway, this, this gentleman uh, was, uh, you know, very friendly and great, and uh, he finally said, you know, I hate Brad Pitt. I said, no, you don't. He's like a really good friend of yours. He said, no, I hate him because he got the part. And I said, oh, did, did you want the, the part? And he said, you couldn't tell when I auditioned with you? And it was George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't remember him at all? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Judy Davis, uh, she talks about that and much more in her new memoir, uh, Dying of Politeness. It's out now. And Thelma and Louise, it kind of relates to the title because Susan Sarandon, you learnt something from watching her work. Absolutely, from watching her move through her life, yeah. Um, so it's called Dying of Politeness because my family uh, was raised to be insanely polite. And more than just saying please and thank you, but uh, you could never need anything from anybody else. You, you had to uh, say no to everything and be very, you know, self-effacing. Anyway, so when, by the time I met her, I was still prefacing everything I said with, this is probably a stupid idea, but, I mean, could we possibly? And then the day I met her, I was like, immediately, uh, you know, she was like, well, I think we should cut my first line. And, then, and I was like, wait, oh, you can be like that? A woman can be like that? And I looked at Ridley Scott, and he's like, yeah, you know what? I'm like, Wow, my mind was like blown. It sounds crazy, but really, that I, I really was so unused to ever seeing a woman just say what she thinks, yeah, and not being you know self-effacing like that. But also, I mean, you talk about your family there. It does come from a deep place. Yes. I mean, there's stories in this book that your family. I mean, the classic story is the story where you're driving with your is he your great uncle Jack? Great uncle Jack, yeah. So how old was great uncle Jack? Ninety nine. And he's behind uh, behind the wheel and of the he car. He was behind the wheel, right? And my <laughs> parents and I were in the back seat, and my aunt Marianne was in the front, and uh, we're going down this very narrow road at night, and uh, every once in a while, uncle Jack would just veer into the oncoming <laughs> traffic lane. <laughs> Thankfully, no one was coming, and then veer back and. Uh, my parents weren't going to say anything, but my mom put me in the middle between them in case, uh, you know, af when we had the head-on collision, I might die less, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so now he veers into the other lane, but a car is coming. And closing the gap, closing the gap, there's nowhere for them to pull off, you know, and no one says anything. At the last instant, my aunt says, a little to the right, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> he just veers out of the way. And they went by so close, their faces were the right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we, my parents would literally rather die <laughs> and kill their child <laughs> than say something that Uncle Jack might be... You know, offended by. Yeah, offended yeah. by. So they're very polite, and then you become an actress. Right. So they have to go see your movies. So, like, right. when they went to see your first movie, Tootsie, right. were they polite, or did they tell you the truth? Well, my brother and I went with my parents, and it was the middle of the day, and nobody else was in the theater, so they had no opportunity to see how other people might, you know, real people might react to it. Uh, and we left the theater, and my brother said, that was great. We get in the car, and there's silence. There's nothing. Nobody's saying anything. And 
like 20 minutes go by where no one has said, I, I just was in a movie and <laughs> nobody said anything. And then my mom finally said, so what do we have for dinner? <laughs> they never said anything because... Never acknowledged it at all. Well, no, and I, it was because I was in my underwear in the movie. Oh. And they didn't know what to say, yeah. OK, so that's bad. You're then in The Fly. Right. Did you even let them see The Fly? Yes. They were with my brother at the time and they went to see it and I knew that they were watching it and then I'm not getting a phone call. And so I call my brother. He says, oh, yeah, I love the movie. It's so great. I said, well, but put mom and dad on. They don't want to talk to you. Oh. I said, what? And my dad in the background says, you got to make better movies than that if you want me to watch them. <laughs> I said, put mom on the phone. And she, hello? <laughs> mom, what's, what's wrong? Well, you know. <laughs> what? I, there's parts of that I didn't like. <laughs> and what, well, what, Mom? You know. No, I don't, Mom. Is it when the monkey turns inside out or when Jeff's ear falls off or when I give birth to a maggot? I just, I literally, <laughs> I literally don't know what you're talking about. And she said, it was the sex. <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, but, but I had to tell you, another story was when, um, I made Long Kiss Goodnight, uh, very R-rated, very vulgar, and, and uh, I'm, I was the first uh, female actor ever to say, suck my dick, in a movie. Oh. Thank you. Oh. Oh, the woman, I, 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 I always wondered who that was. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, that's it's great me. to know. It's me. It's you. So anyway, <laughs> I was like, one of my parents, they can't even watch this movie. So uh, I, I got a video made of it with all the uh, swear words and all the anything, you know, that they would disapprove of, take it out. And I said, I just want to spare you from having to go to the movie theater, but just watch it at home, you know, so. And it was very short, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. it was very <laughs> short. But was that the one that was directed by your husband, Rennie Harlan. Harlan? Yes, yes. So did he do that for you? He did it for me, yes. Oh, that's so nice. So yeah. nice. And you, you did a couple of films with your husband, Rennie, and Stephen, now, you've worked with your wife, Hannah, a couple of times. Yes. And now, you played Honestly, husband and wife, didn't you, in, in Time? Yes, we did. So was that weird blurring those lines of... Um, it, it's not really... She's a phenomenal actress, do you yeah. know what I mean? She is absolutely fantastic. So it was just... What it was for us, I think, more importantly, we were kind of, you know, two kids from a council estate, and we had a dream of being actors, do you know what I mean? And we were kind of lying in the bed and the whole camera crew were around us, and it was like, we just had this really lovely moment, and we just kind of looked around, and then we looked at each other, and we went, wow, can you believe this? Yeah. And she was like, no, this is, this is amazing. We're, we're living our dream. And I went, I oh, know, yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. And then I farted. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I was so comfortable in the bed with my missus. And then she went, you dirty... <laughs> There's loads of people here, it's not just me and you. And I was like, sorry, love, I was feeling a bit comfortable. <laughs> like I was really at home in bed, you know what I mean? So, so I ruined a beautiful moment. <laughs> it was one of them. Nature. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll just remind you that Gina's book is Dying of Blackness and it's out in hardback now. OK. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Graham. Stephen Graham brings us a fantastic, challenging drama. It's called The Walk-In. It's currently showing on ITV Mondays at 9, or you can watch the whole series on the ITV Hub. So, I guess the, the starting point for this is that this is a true story. Because yeah. when you watch it, you kind of think... this, But it is. It's true, and it's happened in this country. Yeah, and it's all based on true events. Um, and the writer, Jeff Pope, who's phenomenal, um, he's wrote... I did a show for Jeff a few years ago now, uh, called Little Boy Blue, but this is very close to my heart. You know what I mean? It's, it, I think it's, it's a very poignant drama. It's powerful, um, and I also need, think that, you know, personally for me to be a part of stuff that has a social commentary and kind of, you know, is is really relevant to what's happening today. It's about a neo-Nazi group who, you know, were, were dismantled and, and they were taken to court, and all of these these people were they were the first white supremacists and white terrorists to be convicted in our country. But the, the walk-ins are people that the man Matthew kind of inserts yes. into the groups. Yes. As a young man, he was in the National Front, um, and then he kind of realised the error of his ways. And with me being a mixed-race man, do you know what I mean, growing up as a kid, the National Front, were they were quite rife back in the early, yeah. late 70s and early 80s, do you know what I mean? So I saw that side of it as well, predominantly. And did you meet 
your character. I did, yeah, yeah. We, we, we had a few conversations and then kind of, I don't like to do impersonations of people. Yeah. I like to kind of take it on myself and try and create my own character. Do you know what I mean? And I think it's really relevant and I think it's very poignant for today and for people to, you know, it's gone, it's gone down a storm. No this... pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see a clip. Uh, this is from next week's episode and it's you and your wife played by Leanne Best uh, yeah. preparing to bring a walk-in into your home. This is ridiculous. He's just gonna live with us now. You don't know the first thing about them. It won't be for long. Yeah, I don't think it's dead tight. I can make you sleep on a camp bed. I want only others for the rest. I couldn't just leave him there, could I? Because you know what my problem is? He's got a target on his back now because of what he's done and you've brought it into our home. And no choice. You've done the same thing, Ali. You see, and that, that's the kind of... I mean... <laughs> That's the severity of the fellow who I played, Matthew Collins. That's the severity him and his family had to go through, through bringing these people to justice. Do you know what I mean? They have to keep moving house mm -hmm. and hiding because they get found out where they, where they live. And, yeah. you know, the houses can be petrol bombed and the kids are threatened and stuff like that, all because they're trying to bring these people to justice. And uh, obviously on the show, there, there's children in the show and there's lots of uh, extras and background artists, but there was one background artist who apparently was very impressed to see you. Do you know who I'm talking about? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Is it what? I mean... I... Well, there was one, she, she kept saying... She got like... confused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she got confused. She thought I was someone else. I thought she was being really nice and she went to me, you're doing really well for yourself, aren't you? And I was like, oh, oh thank you, love. You know how extras can have conversations with you? Sorry, supporting artists yeah. can have conversations with you and you're like, oh, OK, you know, and, and they have really interesting yeah. conversations sometimes. Um, and she went, you're doing really well for yourself. I went, oh, thank you very much. And you're being polite, you know what I mean? Sure. And then I was like, yeah, yeah. And she went, cos I never thought it'd happen for you. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK, OK, where, where are we going now? <laughs> and then she was like, well, you know, after Big Brother. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what the f... I, hang on, sorry, love, what? And she went, well, you're Craig from Big Brother. <laughs> there you are, there you go, look. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that she thought the great Big Brother was playing the lead. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's just one of them things. Uh, but the crew. Yes, yes. Go on, Graham. You're going to show it. Aren't you? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. The crew. What did the crew, the crew do? The crew overheard this yes, conversation. Yes, they did over here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Aaron, our wonderful DOP, yeah. decided it'd be great for on my final day <laughs> when I had a big heavy scene with my wife oh, and no. kids. Oh, no. That the crew would all have these T-shirts on. <laughs> he picture. goes, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> Here's that and the big lad there on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Pete and all the boys, yeah. <laughs> so they all they all wore them T-shirts for the whole day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Right. Was um, listen, I must say to you while you're here, uh, mm -hmm. just congratulations on the success of Boiling Point because that was your Thank your you. first movie as a producer as well as a, a yeah. star, right? Yeah, our little company. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were part of that Matriarch Productions. Um, and if you guys, didn't, it's a whole movie in one take. Oh, I heard about that. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Everybody heard about it because it, yeah. Intense, yeah. Have you seen yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice one. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, still get, I still get a bit. Do you know what I mean? I mean, he's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. So. Uh, but just this morning, really exciting announcement. Uh, Boiling Point continues. Yes, yes, we're going to do a, a TV series Sick. for the BBC. Wow. So, Sick. yeah, we're really looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, and, you know, I, I, it's, it's... Well, I can... I, it's most of the cast. I think we're going we're gonna to have most of the cast back. Hannah, obviously, and Vanette. Yeah. And our wonderful director, Phil, who's just phenomenal. We're going to make a, a five-part series, and it's going to be kind of more of a... A kind of social commentary, do you know what I mean? But, yeah. but with the intensity of working in the kitchen. And when might that actually be on telly? Well, I think we start filming in January, so it'll probably be towards the end of next year, maybe next autumn or something. Well, listen, we look forward to the TV version, and just a reminder, The Walk-In continues on ITV on Mondays at 9. OK. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Great news, ladies and gentlemen. Just don't tell Oprah. Uh, Monty Mabusi <laughs> has written her life story. Yeah. 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 I mean, Oprah, <laughs> doesn't, 
She doesn't want to read this. She doesn't want to read this. She does not want to read <laughs> no. this. Keep it away from that woman. <laughs> it's called Finding My Own Rhythm, and it is out now. And of course, this is, you know, it's your story, but it's not just your story. Your family's in here yeah. and everything. So have they read it? Are they okay with it? Well, they haven't. <laughs> I didn't ask. <laughs> I'll give it for Christmas. No, I, I, you know what? <laughs> no, the thing is, my family, everybody in our family has a view and opinion about everything in my life. So I was like, let me do this on my own so that I can put it down as I saw it. And they can write their own book afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it your story from, like, age zero to now? Yes, from South Africa, from uh, birth until now, yeah. That's so, every wow. time people do that, I always think, how do they remember? <laughs> <laughs> I would never, that's, like, I always think, if, I, if you ask, I wouldn't remember what I did. Well, there's that interesting chapter about the couch in the front room. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but that's uh, it, like, I think mine would start there and <laughs> probably end here, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But you're a young story. Yeah. You're supposed to remember shit. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, don't remember, I don't remember much, you know? <laughs> I don't remember. It's all a blur, especially since I've become a musician. Like. Okay. Yeah. So big up yourself for doing that, because that's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. That takes a lot. Yeah. Memory. Memory. Yeah, yeah memory. Yeah. <laughs> and, and actually, some of the story we kind of knew, you know, the yeah. idea of you being a young girl in South Africa yeah. and, and discovering dance, ballroom dance, but I didn't understand that that young girl in South Africa had a big dream. Yes. What was your dream? My dream, my absolutely everything, my goal was to go to Blackpool. I mean, it is. <laughs> you heard her. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It was. Uh, I saw a video when I was a little girl in South Africa. I saw a video with Kevin Clifton and his sister walking on the beach, speaking about Blackpool and dancing and all that. And I was like, this is what I have to do. This is this is the goal. It was the reason for everything. And then you worked at that dream. I mean, yeah. you 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 I saved up money. You found a partner, and then. I know for a fact <laughs> that in 1998, the dream came true. Yes. Here is a clip of <laughs> Motsi Babusi on her first trip to Blackpool. Can I just say, rocking the peak? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we're about 250 couples, something like that. And it was so funny because we, uh, at that competition, we were seventh. Like, coming from South Africa, no lessons, nothing. We came and we were seventh. And I was a tiny little bit disappointed, a tiny little bit. I was like, oh, seventh. But people came to me and were like, oh, you were seventh. You were seventh. So by the time I arrived back to South Africa, I was like, I was seventh. <laughs> <laughs> I was seventh in Blackpool. <laughs> but, like, were you... Like, Famous when you got back to South Africa? Well, no, yeah, well, within the dance industry, I think it was a first. Like, you don't come to UK and people kind of celebrate you, and then you seventh. And then uh, in the dance industry, we made a name for us. They took us seriously from And there. then you, you make this kind of impetuous decision. You move to Germany, <laughs> yeah. and then after a few years, you end up on the German version of Strictly Come Dancing called yeah. Let's Dance! <laughs> um, where... <laughs> I need to go back home. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I don't see this. And, uh, <laughs> so you're, but you weren't a judge. You were the, one of the professionals yes. originally. Yes. Now, yeah, and you were a judge, but you were a professional one. And uh, so you were paired with uh, this German celebrity. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a mind reader. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Like, Jesus, where? No. <laughs> I have to explain the situation. So, <laughs> the thing is, I did not know German celebrities when I arrived. Obviously, I'm in my dance bubble and stuff. So, they told me, like, I, we think you're gonna dance with someone. And then they said, watch YouTube. And he was at the Eurovision Song Contest, like, uh, climbing up the wall, literally. And they're like, that's your partner. And I'm just like, what's happening here? <laughs> but um, we did dance. He's a nice guy, really. <laughs> I... <Whoa. laughs> no! I... <laughs> I 
never want you as a character witness. <laughs> he's, you know, he's nice. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was really, really nice. And I had a little thing that happened with him. Uh, careful, guys. <laughs> Um, what happened was I had a few people's names in my phone and he was Gilda Horn and Hans Galka, my teacher. They were all like in one kind of thing. And then we were just practicing and I was like, this went shit, that didn't work out. He's like this and this, I'm not gonna put it in words. And then it went ping, ping, and he's sitting next to me. <laughs> yes, guys. And I was just like, hi. Oh no, you, know... you sent it to him? Yes, I sent oh, it next to him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But the thing, I try to explain the situation. It's not, a, it's not you, it's me in this whole thing. <laughs> I have to control my feelings. But, I mean, we're really good friends, honestly. Like, we overcome that. that I, I, I Christmas have... together. Christmas <laughs> together. Yeah, be nice. It's the story I wanted to tell Oprah. <laughs> Text her. Uh, <laughs> Uh, now, uh, big year, obviously, for Strictly in this country, the 20th yeah. anniversary. Stormzy, have you been asked to do it? Nah, nah, they wouldn't ask me. <laughs> nah, I can't dance. Oh! Nah, 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 I can't dance. Dancing is... I'm, I get really uncomfortable when I dance. <laughs> you see how I was sweating earlier when I danced? Like... <laughs> so they do me something funny. So, you see... You, you, know, you know, like, um... I was going to call it South London coach, but it's not South London coach, but you know, like, Jamaican coach, mm -hmm. or that, mm -hmm. that... That carnival, people mm -hmm. wine. Mm -hmm. When we was younger, we used to go parties and everyone would, like, the girls would wind on the boys. And I'm such a bad dancer. When, when girls used to try and wind with me, I used to run away in the party. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would literally, like, they're coming over and I used to get really upset and I will start getting flustered and start sweating. Because <laughs> oh, wow. people's watching and the girl starts backing up on you and I'm thinking, no, no, please, please, please. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so I can't, I can't dance, so they, please, strictly just There's, love it me. It sounds like a challenge, you know? No, no, no. I, I'm being challenged here. No, 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 no. Because, Gina, Dancing with the Stars is the American version. Yeah. Have they ever asked you? They did, yeah, they did one year. Uh, but, and, I, you know, I'm incredibly competitive and I like to prove I can do something that I can't do, but I, I didn't, I didn't say yes, I, I don't know. I got yeah. self-conscious. What's the other thing? Oh, yeah, you're rich. <laughs> <laughs> but why would you do it? Uh, here's the thing, though. I did not know this. Uh, Stephen Graham, uh, hiding your light, you are a dancer. No, I'm not. <laughs> you were a dance troupe. You were a dance troupe, weren't you? I was a break dancer. Yeah, dance dancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. We love yeah. That. But, uh, but yeah. like, you took it seriously. There was a bunch of you. Believe <laughs> <laughs> me. Before we go over yeah. there, can I just assure you, I'm not going to ask you to do any break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I saw your face going, Jesus, where's no, this going? Please, Don't worry. Yeah. I'm, Don't I'm worry. nearly I'm 50. Not... I'll pull it here for something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, no, I'm not going to ask you that. We used to go to... I remember once... My auntie Vera, God rest her soul. Um, we used to go, we used to get our lino and we used to get the ghetto blaster and we'd go and we'd have like Grandmaster Flash and Melly Mel and you know, all that kind of fantastic stuff back in the day. And we used to break dance. Um, and we'd, we'd, yeah, was, we were in a crew, we were a little crew, we were, we were half decent, me and a couple, me so and me. You just that roll around break dance. No, I used to win, no one did windmill, don't, don't, no one did windmill. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to, I could pop my lock, you know what I mean? It's just the thought of being with all your friends, like, yo, let's hit the road and break dance now. <laughs> We were a crew. Okay. We were a little crew, do you know what I mean? We, we were the Bronx Breakers. What were you called? What were you called? The Bronx Brothers. The Bronx Breakers. Oh, wow. The Bronx Breakers. Yeah. <laughs> we used to go in the tent, we used to put the line all down and we'd and the people would gather around and we'd make a good couple of quid. Yeah. Play, the, play the video, Graham. I don't have it. I don't have a video. I know. No I videos said... exist, thank <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, you know, it was great. It, yeah, it was... Bring in the lino. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, here's the thing, though. If you want to see... I don't know if you dance, but you certainly sing in the new version of Matilda the Musical. Yeah. yeah. You do sing yeah. in it, don't you? A, 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 li a little uh, bit, yeah, a little bit. Do you do a bit of dancing? No. No, 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 no. What's no, up with the no. dancing in this show? Are you all anti-dancers? <laughs> no, 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 no. difficult, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, guys. No, it's tougher than... <laughs> it's your kind of it's dancing. Tough, man. It's yeah. No. Difficult. Even, like, for me, like, a, like, a two-step, like, I think about it, like, one, two, yeah, so... <laughs> so, no, it's a lot, it's a it's lot. It's a start. Yeah, it's yeah, a start. start. <laughs> I see talent. But, but can I be real? If I had one wish, it would be to be able to dance. I ha I and I'm, that's not, I'm not lying, like, <laughs> sometimes, yeah, my, I've got mates who can dance, and when, like, I always feel like if I could dance, I would be one of those people who just dances all the time. Just call me. 
Yeah. <laughs> Dreams come true. <laughs> Dreams come true. <laughs> Uh, let's just remind people of Strictly tomorrow night at 6.30 on BBC One and iPlayer. This week, the theme is 100 years of the BBC, yeah. I'm told. Right. And, of course, at Motsi's book, Finding My Own Rhythm, is out now. Very good. OK, uh, it is time for music. I'm dancing. <laughs> Stormzy, your Thank school you. is over there. It awaits. So uh, if off you go. Cool, wicked. I'm okay. just trying to think. Do I wear my jacket? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, you're so sweating. Good. That's wet. Yeah. Chill out in so the game. Take your jacket over with All right, you, cool. and then you can decide. All right, cool. Okay. Uh, if it feels a bit cold. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do it for the okay. looks. Do it for the looks. Put it on. <laughs> yeah, go that way. Just, just go uh, that way. It's over there. Cool. It's probably quicker. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> there here with the exclusive first live performance of Hide and Seek from the new album, This Is What I Mean. Is he there? He is. It is Stormzy! <laughs> oh, girl, you're shining. No, you're my diamond. You need reminding. This moment of timing when your soul needs aligning It's me you can find me Seeking and hiding Nowhere to find me there What's it gonna be? What we gonna do? Here we go again This ain't nothing new I ain't trying to run game but it's true Cause you you call me for help, you gotta chill. Need time for yourself, you gotta heal. This ain't something you felt, it's how you feel. You came and you made me feel. Alright, we built this all wrong. I take blame, but instead of us tearing it down, we rearrange, baby. Don't let it fall. Don't let it fall, girl. Don't let it fall, alright. Don't wanna fight no more. Keep me where I belong. Try to love try, but I just can't hide from your love. Oh, girl, you're shining. No, oh, you're my diamond. You need reminding. It's moment of timing when your soul needs aligning. It's me you can find it. Seeking and hiding. Nowhere to find me. Yeah. Nowhere to find me. Let me search now, take your shoes off, put your purse down How you gonna tell me that it's never gonna work now? Type of stuff to make me put a verse down Worse now, cause we made our bed and got a lay in it Thought it wasn't hard for me, but every day it is Heartbreak, it's such a dark place, but we stay in it What I'm saying is exactly what I say is I found you I feel your presence when I'm not around you Queen in your city, they need to crown you Holy water, baby, let me drown you Fire and water, I got it loud Burn out, then reappear Light's still guiding you home, you know I'm there. And rest assured, if you ever needed help or just need a place to hide, no, I keep it to myself. Work. Oh, girl, you're shining. No, you're my diamond. You need reminding. This moment of timing when your soul needs aligning. It's me you can find it. Seeking and hiding. Nowhere to find me.
So good, really good. And your voice, your singing voice. Have you been working on your singing voice? I'm, I've been trying. I've been trying. I've got my vocal coach Priscilla there. It's helps. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. really, really lovely. Yeah. And it's been a while. Like, were you nervous before you did that? Or? Yeah, super nervous. Yeah, really? yeah, 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 super nervous. So cool and calm. No, it's always, it's always like performing. I think it, it, the, the more intimate it is the. More nerve wracking it is. Oh, but yeah, 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 yeah. But that was, phenomenal. yeah, it was. Um, um, Absolutely phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm fine, everybody. The album, This Is What I Mean, is out uh, on the 25th of November. So you can pre order that. Thank you so much for that performance. No, Good luck with that you. album and, and all your success, Stormzy. Thank you so much. Thank Stormzy, you. everyone. Yeah. Wow. Oh, thank you. It's so beautiful. Yeah. But before we go, we do have time for a quick visit to the big red chair. Who's up first? Hello. Hello. Hi. High hopes for you. <laughs> uh, what's your name? Jenny. Jenny, lovely. And uh, what do you do, Jenny? I'm a disability support worker. Okay. And where do you do that? Uh, well, I do it in Ireland at the moment, but also in Australia because I kind of live there as well. Oh, like, okay. Go. Okay, very good. And uh, whereabouts in Ireland? Wicklow. So <laughs> not really near Cork. No, but Wicklow's <laughs> lovely. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, okay, off you go with your story. Uh, so, I have two belly buttons and I use them to get free drinks. Yes! Bring it home, Ireland! Bring it home! Oh, yeah! No, I, no, I, oh, I want to see it! So that, uh, that's not the whole story. Okay, <laughs> okay. So You've got two belly buttons. Yeah, so I use them to get free drinks a lot, and there's a lot of stories, but one of them, um, I go on a birthday adventure every year, so I went to... Um, no, I just to... I, I, we need to backtrack slightly. <laughs> Is one just something that looks like a belly button, <laughs> no, or do you have two belly buttons? They're legit. Yeah. So what, you two umbilical cords? Well, the doctor thinks I could have absorbed my twin in the womb. Oh. 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 We don't know. We don't know. Oh. <laughs> she, she, she ate her own twin. <laughs> In the wind. I do have a good appetite. You've got a story. You've got a story. <laughs> yeah, wow. That, that's not even her story. <laughs> that's just a by the by. So you've eaten your twin. You've got the. You've got the two. You've got the two belly buttons. You're now out on a birthday adventure. Okay, go. So I was in Queenstown, New Zealand, and uh, there was an Irish bartender in one of the bars. So I'd shown him the buttons the night before, and I got some free drinks. Out of them. <laughs> so. I was like, right, this is the place to go for my birthday. I'm going to get some free drinks. And they had cocktails and teapots there. So I went up to it and I was like, right, any chance of some free teapots now? I, I know I've shown you the buttons, but come on, it's my birthday. And he was like, actually, wait there. We've got a colleague who's terrified of belly buttons. <laughs> and if we get you to show you them, we'll, like, we will give you free teapots for the rest of the night if you show your belly buttons to our colleague. I was like, yeah, let's do it. So they brought me over to the bar where it goes up like this, and they grabbed her by the shoulders so she couldn't move, and they were like, go, go, go! So uh, down went the waistband and out came the buttons, and uh, I showed them to her, and she was like, ah! And she completely freaked out and started crying and left. And uh, they high-fived me, and they gave me free teapots for the rest of the night. Yeah. 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 You're free to talk, but can we... Can we see? Okay. I have to undo Oh, oh okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, look away, look away, everyone. Look away. I'll just stand like this for a Ready? minute. Wait, wait. Oh, there. Oh, there oh. they are. <laughs> and upstairs and downstairs. Hello. You can walk. You can walk. Hello. There you go. And that really is all we've got time for. If you'd like to have a go in the red, chair yourself and tell your story, you can contact us via our website at this very address. You didn't think you'd see that tonight, did you? No. <laughs> um, Say thank you to all of my guests. Stormzy! <laughs> Matsy Mabushi! <laughs> Stephen Grubb! <laughs> and Gina Davis! <laughs> Join me next week with singer-songwriter Lady Blackbird, footballer turned presenter Alex Scott, Oscar winner Eddie Redmayne, Hi. pop superstar Taylor Swift, and Hi. rock legend Bono. Hi. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye! Whether you're a first-timer or a seasoned fan, press red now to watch all six series of Peaky Blinders on iPlayer. And it's Jazz Hands at the Ready on BBC One. Rusical Week with guest judge Hannah Waddingham on RuPaul's Drag Race UK.